In this problem, we are going to use the method of example 2.5 to find these expressions. And in this video over here, we'll focus on finding these four terms over here. And by following the method of example 2.5, we will be using these two results over here. So we can express the x and your p in terms of a plus and a minus. So we're going to use this to try to find these expected values. So first of all, let us focus on the expected value of x. So of course, you have your integral. And then we're finding the expected values for the nth stationary state. So we take the conjugate, and then we multiply this by x. And in this case, we can just substitute this alternate expression indirectly. So this whole thing over here will be x, and then xi n dx. And then as you can see, a plus is going to raise xi n to something that's proportional to xi n plus 1. a minus is going to lower this xi n over, uh, to something that is proportional to n minus 1. It's not exactly n plus, uh, xi n plus 1 and xi n minus 1 because there, it will still lack this normalizing constant, but it will be proportional to these two functions. And if you're integrating xi n uh, multiplied by xi n plus 1 or xi n minus 1, you're going to get 0 because these functions are orthogonal because the subscripts are different. So even though it's, if you apply this operator to this function directly, even though you don't get exactly xi n plus 1, it doesn't really matter because the only difference is just a normalizing constant. So in the end, you essentially get something that's similar to xi n multiplied by xi n plus 1, and the integral is just equal to 0. So this is just equal to 0. And if this is 0, that means using this formula over here, the expected value of momentum is also 0. And another way to check this is that you can apply this formula into this integral directly and then you get something similar. The a plus and a minus, it creates these two orthogonal functions, and in the end, the integral just becomes 0. So now we know that the expected value of x and p are both 0. So now we're going to move on to the expected value of x squared. And this we've actually evaluated already in example uh, 2.5. So we found that this expression over here is equal to the expected value of the uh, potential. And then we found that this is equal to 1 half h bar omega n plus 1 half. So this was proven in example 2.5. So you can check that out if you're interested. So if you've forgotten how to prove it. So now we can just do a bit of slight uh, rearranging of terms to arrive at our answer. So you see these omegas, they cancel out. And so the expected value of x squared is equal to n plus 1 half h bar divided by m omega. So this is the expected value of x squared. So we've actually found this already in example 2.5. So now all that remains is to find the expected value of p, uh, p squared. So let's do just that. So the expected value of p squared is equal to this integral. So now we're just using the formula directly, the conjugate of xi n. And then we have p squared, so essentially we just take this expression and then square it. So uh, let's open a new page to see what p squared is equal to. So of course I can just square the constants. This i becomes negative, so I get negative h bar m omega divided by 2. And then the operators, they collide together and they give us something that looks like this. So now we can substitute this expression straight into this integral. So for the formula for the expected value of p squared, there should be the momentum operator square over here. And as we, as we found over here, we can also express the momentum operator squared as this expression. So we just dump this expression straight in. So this should be a minus, minus a plus a minus. So if you remember the derivation of the expected value of x squared, I think you can see that you're seeing something that's pretty similar. So once again, I can pull these constants out. And then of course the a plus square term and the a minus square term, it's going to collide with xi n, and it's just going to, going to be equal to zero because you're just raising this to something that's proportional to xi n plus two for this case and then for this operator you're just lowering it to something that's proportional to xi n minus two and then once again if you integrate this multiplied by xi n the conjugate you just get zero because these functions are these functions are orthogonal with each other so you just get zero so we can essentially just ignore these two terms and this is exactly the same thing we did in example 2.5. So if you check out example 2.5, we did something similar. So there was another a plus square and a minus square, and then we just got rid of it because the functions are orthogonal. So in the end, we're just left with 
the conjugate of xi n. And then here we have minus a plus a minus applied to xi n, and then minus a minus a plus applied to xi n. So I can just take away this negative sign over here, so dx. And so uh, recall we found a formula for evaluating these expressions actually earlier in the derivations in, in the book. So this is equal to n xi n, and then this is equal to n plus 1 xi n. And so now we can just substitute, substitute these expressions into the integral directly. So we get n xi n squared plus n plus 1 xi n squared dx. And then of course integrating these two functions is just equal to 1 because these are normalized. So in the end we just get n plus n plus 1. So n plus n plus 1 because integrating these two is just equal to equal to 1. So in the end we get 2n plus 1 and then I can just put the 1 half inside the bracket so we get n plus 1 half h bar m omega. So this is the expected value of p squared.